I haven't even been able to process this for the last 48 hours. I woke up um, 49 hours ago to the news, to the news, to the news that BTS is enlisting starting with Jin, and I have had zero time to process this. Um, Monday was super busy. I've got two toddlers. In case you're new here, my name is Ashley Sue here. We talk about BTS, midlife, and mental health, and how these things come together. I've got two toddlers. I'm an old mom. Between toddlerdom and the fact that yesterday was my husband's birthday, things have been so hard. Anyway, that's like, that, that, if you're, anyway, I guess also it was okay with me to not have to think too much about it. So I sent a few text messages to a few army who I actually have their phone numbers. At least the army that I'm with, we, we all are pretty much the same consensus. So first, let's talk about that. We are proud. We are proud of our men for making the decision that's right for them, despite pressure that we cannot even comprehend for them to keep waiting it out, to keep waiting to see if the government is going to give them an exemption that we don't even know that they want. We don't know. They have not said at any point that they wanted an exemption. They haven't publicly said that. And it's not our job as army to speculate either which way. The one thing we do know is to trust them and their words. And they have always said they will proudly serve when that time has come. That this is part of Korean culture and tradition that we as non-Koreans do not get to speak up on and have like strong thoughts and feelings toward. One thing that seemed pretty evident, a video that I never posted, which was right after the festive dinner. So many things were said during the festive dinner that were worth taking note of. This whole chapter two gives them the freedom to make some big decisions, life decisions, things that they did not say but alluded to and that actually I really wish they had said even though that's not up for me to choose either but the ability to enlist and this be something that they choose to do and choose to do when they choose to do it instead of it being company mandated or government mandated that they would have gotten to do after the map of the soul tour except for the pandemic robbed them of that tour and then the success of dynamite sort of robbed them of free agency in some capacity because the momentum of getting that ball rolling and the fact the pandemic might be loosening up and they may finally get to do some touring, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And also relationships, their lives are on hold as far as having actual romantic relationships and being able to be more free about that, which we want for them, but as idols, they, and I hate, I use that word loosely because they are so much more than idols, but still they are in a culture where idols cannot really date. There are army, none of us, none of us, but there are people out there who call themselves army who are all sorts of twisted at the thought of the guys dating. I mean, the stylist Nuna, the hate that she got on her Instagram account was ridiculous. And Olivia Rodrigo, the hate she got because she was part of a skit before the Grammys with Tay. Just like, that is young immaturity and we're gonna, we're gonna ignore that because they're very loud and very obvious. They are not true representatives of ARMY, though that is unfortunate because they are the ones that get talked about and seen very frequently. Which is actually a plus toward Twitter ARMY. I know I'm rambling here. Twitter ARMY, actually there's so many pluses to Twitter ARMY. I've ragged on Twitter ARMY. I apologize. There's so many good things to Twitter ARMY also. You just, have to constantly be aware that that ding dongery is going to end up in your timeline. You're going to have to block or mute some people and keep curating. And one time curation is not going to be enough probably. But the guys need to be able to date. And I don't know if you're not Korean, you may not understand. I only know because I was watching the Korean dating. It's not a dating show, but Change Change Days. I've brought that up a couple times. I really like that show so much. Maybe because I'm kind of in the same boat. It's about relationships that aren't sure if they should stay together. They love each other and they want it to work out, but they really don't know if they're good for each other and might be better off without each other. One of the couples there, they've been together for five years and they're 27. They are super, super struggling on whether or not to stay together because he has not entered the military yet. 
she's waited for five years for a real commitment and now realizes she has to wait two more years and once he comes out of the military then he has to kind of start his life again which our men will have less of an issue doing that at least in theory but at the same time their lives are on hold so much longer than they than it should have been and and the pandemic had a huge part in sort of robbing them from that which as a good friend pointed out he was also army like to be fair i guess the pandemic robbed a lot of people of a couple years of their lives so we're all still scrambling that's enough rambling i've talked a lot here twitter army a beautiful thing about twitter army you know what twitter army did bring the humor. They brought the humor. I avoided Twitter after the announcement because I didn't want to see people getting pissed off and like complaining about the government not acting fast enough. And from what we've seen, it looks like the government was considering alternative forms of service, including forcing the guys to tour. And then you see headlines and articles about how South Korea stands to lose billions because of the news of their enlistment, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, just the pressure on them to avoid making a decision, to let their lives be on hold and let everybody else make the decisions for them. When frankly, what I got from the festival dinner is they don't want a tour. That they may in the future, but right now they need mental break from, from the K-pop system, from the music industry at large and the, the forced go, 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 tour, 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 find the next hit, keep going, get that Grammy kind of just cycle that they need space to be humans and men and creative and passionate and that is hard to maintain any of those things much less all of them so the thought of forced touring as service to your country is sort of wild anyway i'm blah blah blah, blah. so i avoided twitter because i thought twitter was gonna bring the gloom and the doom and the anger and sometimes parts of Twitter do. Twitter brought the humor. My good friend Peaches let me know that Twitter was bringing the humor. It was last night when I finally got to see some of the tweets that ARMY had been posting. Purple camo is selling out places online or having huge spikes in sales. And then yesterday we got Chins, the astronaut, like the trailer for the logo and the pre-sale opened up for it. This is huge. This is all part of chapter two. None of this was taken lightly. None of this None of this was taken lightly. I feel like the men made this decision pre-Festa. I do not feel like they're sitting around waiting for the government to make choices for them. I think they're tired of that. But then again, why am I playing armchair psychologist and saying what I think they're thinking? Anyhow, that's not my job. My job is to be proud of them and to know that they're doing the right thing. Where Twitter Army brought the humor, I'm probably gonna come through on your tears today. Now, we don't all wanna cry, I get that, and I don't. I don't know how, I don't know what I want to do. I have not processed, I have, I have not processed yet my own f actual feelings. I have thoughts, like being proud, so proud of these men for choosing what's right for them and taking their life in their own hands and how they're going to do it and nothing but support and love for them. As On a selfish level, I have not processed yet. In the next couple of days, we will watch some yet to come concert. We will talk about things. I will process things. But today it occurred to me, actually it occurred to me Monday. What I wanted to do next is watch a video that I've never seen before of BTS's. And I'm prepared to cry. There, to my knowledge, there's only two BTS videos I've never seen, ever. One of them is We Are Bulletproof, The Eternal. The song, rips me apart. It is so sweet. It is so beautiful. I know the video is cartoon animated. I think I was informed last summer by an army that We Are Bulletproof the Eternal references all the other videos up to that point and their own timeline, not just the videos, but actually their their experience so far. So I had to watch a lot of other videos first. The last two days I have been living, living in my Permission to Dance hoodie from Vegas and um, carrying around a lot of weight in my heart and just wishing I could be around ARMY face to face. You know, Laurie and Peaches and Anissa and Bonnie and, and then meet a lot of you face to face who I've only know all online. Just wish that I were face to face so that we could like laugh in person and watch 
part two of flying yoga in person. And um, I think we need to plan our own mini tour. I think we need to make 2023 and 2024 a time where we make plans to get together and have our own BTS parties and showings. And if I make a discord, will you join me there where we can arrange things like that, where we can plan visits to each other and make our own little art exhibition, support each other and all the things. Let me know if this is something you would do because I've wanted to do it for a long time. And I think I'm going to do it. All right, let's watch We Are Bulletproof the Eternal. By the way, yet to come, Busan was phenomenal, incredible, legendary. And I'm, I'm not using that word lightly. Oh my gosh. Anyway, we'll talk about that next time. Let's watch this. I have no idea what kind of emotions are going to... It says this came out in 2020 Festa. So during the pandemic, pre-Dynamite pre me knowing them this came out we've got our old intro here <clears throat> of course we do right yeah oh i was like that looks weird but oh wow Their voices. Can you imagine how hard they worked over the years? <clears throat> I cannot comprehend. Don't wanna die, but so much pain, too much cry. They work so hard. It's out the gate. That was the seven years. Seven years post debut for Festa. Oh my God. <laughs> this BTS sucks. Oh, debut Nam June. <laughs> Bad memories. <laughs> God! <laughs> oh, my favorite song. My favorite video. <laughs> wow. Run bulletproof run. Not breathing. <laughs> oh, surrounded.
Oh, it's so beautiful. What a gift. What a gift to Army. You know, they tell us bits and pieces about what it was like when they were debuting and they were fighting. And fighting, fighting to be heard wasn't just debut and wasn't just right after. They've had so many battles. Not just limited to being made fun of for their name or being considered a ragtag team or not being manly enough or rapper enough. It's like it didn't end for them. It just. The amount of people who wanted to tear them down and then and or use them. I love that they were made fun of for their name, for it to become such a resonating term, just bulletproof. That black wave is huge. I, I wasn't, I had therapy on Monday actually. And, um, oh wait, this is actually before therapy. Over the weekend, I was doing some meditation and I was having this image of a black wave chasing me and trying to pull me under. We hold them all without fear. <clears throat> Let's listen to Sugar's words again. They all said no, but we made it through. Bad memories, countless trials. We stopped them all without fear, bulletproof. Did the long winter really give way to spring? You know, I... <coughs> I love this part where they're running through their videos. In their little debut outfits. Oh, I'm so tense. You know, to be an army in at the concert feels a lot like this. You actually feel like you're part of a universe, and everyone's army bombs are the microcosmos. However, I know some of you haven't. I can't even imagine what it's like for them to be in the middle of it and surrounded by it. You know, we get to see camera angles of what it's like to be surrounded by it, but 
I think it was Jen who actually said during an interview, what was that, in, at the beginning of 2021 with KBS, he was saying that he didn't want to sound cocky. It wasn't arrogance, but that you can't imagine what it feels like unless you're actually the person on the stage. And I, I think it was Nam June who seemed to, that really resonated with him, but it might have been all of it kind of, anyway. That's how it feels to be at the concert, for sure. It kind of feels like the way just to be in a city of of the guys where the concert is happening because the army are everywhere and it's incredible. It really is. I want to say I know that some of you have still not made it to a BTS concert. Some of you are newer fans like myself or even much newer fans than myself and that you may be very concerned at this point that you won't get to see them in concert. We have to take them into their words. This is That's their plan. And they've tried to give us so many assurances. If you look at the entire Map of the Soul album, it's a goodbye, but not a forever goodbye. And there was a vibe with the Permission to Dance concerts that that that, that might be it for a while. But then we have to remember, um, in Vegas, I felt, I felt this energy in Vegas at their show that, that they were they were leaving it all on the stage, prepared that that might be their last time on stage for a long time. And it, particularly, and I've referenced this before, something about the way JK very suddenly, abruptly, like it wasn't really in a context other than you could see there was a context in his head. The way he turned around with that, that giant smile and said, it's not gonna be the last time. It's never gonna be the last time. <laughs> and we have to, Think about that and the fact that it's Festa Dinner, they said that they're going, there will be more. And even in the yet to come Busan concert, didn't they also say it there? Didn't they also say that we'll see them? It's like they, they've been giving us all these reassurances. They've been letting us know that they know that we're scared, but that they're not going away. We've seen them talk about, you know, since, since, since chapter two has started, how good it felt to be back on stage with all of each other again because they need the solo activities. They need solo lives, but at the same time, home is within within Bangtan and within ARMY and within what they've cr created and has propelled into such a movement internationally, all over the world. I'm just trying to say, I know that some of you are particularly brokenhearted right now. And I, I say that as somebody who, I discovered them during the pandemic and they actually saved my life on the day that I wanted to end it. And I spent the next months scrambling, at times being clutched with anxiety so thick that I couldn't breathe. It would clutch my chest and paralyze me from breathing and panic at the thought that I may never see them in person. I was terrified. How will my life feel if I never get to actually be near them so I can whisper to them, even if they can't hear me, just whisper to them in the same room, I love you. Thank you. <laughs> so I know that feeling of fear. Of, oh my God, what if, what if I never get to? What if they never tour? What if they break up? What if whatever, and, and it's gone, that chance. So that anxiety is no longer in me, but I know that anxiety. So I know that it's in some of you. We have to trust their words and we have to know that we're really, really blessed to be alive in this magical time and space that Bangtan, Sonyeondan exist and has graced all of us so much with them, with a change, a shift in so many parts of, of the world. What love means and looks like, what friendship can emerge from, and what self-love is. They have redefined and reshaped love and relationships in so many of our lives. And even with them enlisting, however much or little we hear from them for the next two years, they will continue to shape who we are as individuals and as a collective. And we will be waiting for them and we'll be waiting together. So I will continue to sign things with eight purple hearts, one for each of their hearts of the men who comprise Bangtan Sonyeondan. I'm looking at photos of them right now. <laughs> and then one for ARMY, the heart of ARMY, that you may just have one ARMY with you. In spirit, you may have the entirety of ARMY with you. We collectively love you, love them. They are not seven with us. I say we make the most of the next two years. We will love them, we will support them, we will support 
and love each of their projects as they come out starting with the astronaut in just a week in nine days nine days we get a song with Jen and is Coldplay in this? I, I haven't I haven't seen for sure. And each of their albums, songs, novels, autobiographies, acting, painting exhibitions, whatever it is they come out with, we're going we're 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 all in. And when the art of their lives starts to be unfolding more, and we actually get to see parts of them being in love, in relationships. Uh, whatever that looks like, however that goes, we want everything good for them. But the truth of it is, sometimes they may be, they may end up in a relationship, and it may break up. And we are strong enough as army not to be hateful toward people, but just to support and love. Put all of our energy into loving these men and the people that they love and the life that they each individually and together create, and the, to do that with each other. So let's make the two years a training period. So we're stronger and ready to support them and love them in all the ways from here through eternity and to support each other. I really am interested in creating a discord where stuff can be organized amongst us. I'm going to travel and I, I'll be honest, I really wanted to go to South Korea in 2023 and I was nervous to. I was nervous to even make the plans because if you make plans for something like that, you've got to make them pretty far in advance, right? But I've been afraid to because I was like, oh my God, what if they get the exclusion from the government and they don't have to do military time, but then they end up having to announce they have to do a tour and then I'm going to want to see them on tour, but what if I've already booked being in South Korea at the same time? And I know these are very first world luxuries and problems to be whining about in my head, but I, I was a little panicked. I didn't, I, I wanted to put my own life on hold to figure out what they're doing so I can be part of that and support that. This is a chance for an expansion of my own chapter two. I'm in chapter two. They... The day that they found me, they turned the page into my chapter two. And I don't want to keep crying, so I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop crying and let's not put our lives on hold. Our lives have all been on hold for so long for so many reasons, whether it's because you're in a marriage that you really want to work out, but that you feel like your soul is being crushed under, whether you're in a bad marriage, whether you are single and are afraid you're never going to find marriage, whether you have been clutched with fear because of the pandemic, whether you are in various states of grief because I know some of you have lost parents in the last couple of years, or you're struggling because you're raising kids in the middle of all these other types of grief. Can we just take a collective inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale. <laughs> Keep walking, keep growing our story so that we have stories to tell these men. Keep walking, keep being bulletproof, even when we are clutched with fear. I am just a big psycho babble right now, so I'm, I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna go hide in my hoodie, and I can't really hide in my hoodie because I have to go mom. God loves you, I love you, BTS loves you, love yourself. You never walk alone.